Thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here and have this opportunity to give this talk. Yeah, so my title is Counting Curves in Calabial Threefolds. Um, to begin with, um, I'm going to take x uh, to be a smooth, probably projective uh, threefold. And it's not yet Calabial, but uh, Calabial assumption will be in, in important at various uh, various points later. Um, so if we want to count curves in X, maybe the first um, first space we'd want to consider is just the space of, of smooth embedded embedded curves. Smooth curve. Um, and probably we want to decompose this uh, space by the homology class of the curve, but uh, th there's no need to to do that yet. Um, unfortunately, this is not such a nice space. If this were a, a nice enough space, then, then we wouldn't be giving a whole talk on, on how to count curves. Um, so if you have a given uh, point in this, in this space of embedded curves, um, well, the deformation theory of this given smooth curve. This is controlled by the cohomology of your curve with coefficients in the normal bundle. And it's, so it's, it's not so hard to imagine how a holomorphic section of the normal bundle gives you a, a, a first order deformation of an embedded curve. Um, and <coughs> H1 um, was called the obstruction space. So um, what this means, what, what, what I mean by say it's controlled uh, by this, well, there's a, notion of uh, the deformation theory and algebraic geometry. Um, I, I only pretend to be an algebraic geometer sometimes. So, um, so, 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 so I, I, would, I would probably think about um, this statement, one way of uh, interpreting this statement as saying um, there's something called the uh, Kuranishi map going from H0 to H1. And um, depending on some choices, maybe call it S. And then the space of embedded curves inside X um, can be identified with a zero set of S um, near uh, near this specific point. OK, so in particular, if there are no obstructions, then, then this is locally smooth space of, of, of this dimension. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear the question. <coughs> Um, yes, I guess that's, I guess that's right. Um, yeah, that's because I think the differential geometrically, and so not even to all orders, to an actual neighborhood. But anyway, it, it's, um, right, so, so, so it, it makes sense to assign this, this quantity called the uh, virtual dimension. Um, um, of the space of embedded curves at x um, near this point, that this is um, the Euler characteristic, which is h0 minus h1. So that 
That's right. That's the expected dimension of this uh, of this zero set. If s is transverse to zero, um, then and then this um, zero set will have this dimension. Um, now, being the zero set of a a function between two um, two affine spaces, um, this um, the space of embedded curves, it acquires a cycle. It acquires a canonical cycle called the virtual fundamental cycle um, obtained by taking the, the fundamental class of, of this space and capping it with, um, uh, with S pullback uh, the, the top class of, of this space. So it lies in the homology um, in, in, in degree in degree um, the virtual dimension. So Yes, it might be. So, so we can't do much with it. Yeah, that, that's yes, indeed. <coughs> yeah, um, you could may, may, maybe you'd rather I call it Borel Moore homology, but homology rel infinity. So. If, it's homology relative a, a neighborhood of an infinity where uh, maybe you take the inverse limit as the neighborhood gets smaller and smaller. So, so this virtual dimension, since we're in dimension three, it's very simple. It's um, the first Turing class of x paired with the fun, paired against the curve C. Um, and in the Calabi Yau setting, the first Turing class is zero. So the space of embedded curve is always dimension zero in any homology class. Um, and so you get a point, uh, element of H zero, which um, if the space were compact, you, you'd be able to get an integer out of. Okay, but, but typically it's, it's not compact. So um, there are lots of choices of compactification. There's a great uh, short survey article by Pandey, Pandey, and Thomas called um, Six and a Half Ways of Counting Curves. And they list six and a half ways of um, compactifying the space to, um, to count curves. Um, now the most, the most, the most well-known are probably first um, stable map compactification. So that's usually denoted maybe m bar g of x. That's the space of nodal curves of genus g with a map um, to x, um, which have finite automorphism. Group and the invariance, the enumerative invariance you get out of out of the space um, <coughs> are, are called the Gromov Witten invariance, and they it's it's convenient to assemble this. into a power series, which um, (laughs) 
where you index by order characteristic. So the convenient thing um, to do is not index by genus, but by order characteristic. And so, so you give a power series in you. Another way of compactifying is using ideal sheaves. So um, there are two ways to describe a curve, maybe as the image of a map. That's the first. Thinking about curves from that perspective, you, you naturally um, stumble upon this sort of compactification. If you think about curves as being cut out by equations, then you naturally stumble upon the, the ideal sheaf compactification. Let's see. So, um, so this would be um, this moduli space of stable maps, except um, except uh, we allow disconnected domain. So it doesn't really make sense to talk about genus. I'm just talking about Euler characteristic. Um, and no constant components. So you know, whether you include constants or not, it doesn't really change the information. Um, you could recover one count from the other. But for the purposes of having a nice generating function with nice properties, this is what you want to impose. Um, yeah, that's right. I should fix a degree. That's right. So let's let's write um, Gromov Witten of x in, in homology class beta. Let me erase and give. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we'll fix the homology class and look at curves in, in total homology class beta. Yeah, and then then this moduli space is is indeed compact, and um, and so you can count its elements. It's virtual dimension zero. So for for ideal sheaves, um, you count. You look at the moduli space of ideal. Sheaves, um, where uh, the dimension of the support of this quotient is one, and the holomorphic or like characteristic of, of this closed subscheme is n. Okay. Okay, and then you can also stratify by uh, by by homology class. So this is, this is some Hilbert scheme, and it's going to be compact because I fixed the Euler characteristic. Um, so the support typically looks like a bunch of curves and a bunch of points in the variety. And you can similarly um, form a, a, a generating series. I n x comma beta or times q to the n. So the coefficients now are integers. Stable maps can have automorphisms. So if you have a, a round, one for inst particular instance of a stable map would be you know, <coughs> some multiple covering of an, of an embedded curve. And those could certainly have, uh, have automorphisms. Uh, whereas ideal sheaves have no automorphisms. So, um, so the count you get is integers. OK, so the fact that the support of this quotient, Ox modulo i, might have some points, some isolated points, is a technical annoyance. So, so there's also a notion of a stable pair, which I won't. Um, I won't define, um, but it's an, I, 
an ideal sheaf with some, some extra data. And you get um, another generating series, Pande Pande Thomas invariants. These are Donaldson Thomas invariants, ideal sheaves. And so, so Donaldson Thomas and Pande Pande Thomas invariants are known to be um, e equivalent to numerative theories. This is the generating functions are the, are the same up to a no certain normalization. Um, that's work of Bridgeland. Um, but there's, I guess I shouldn't write here, should I? Let, let me write somewhere else. So there's conjecture of Malik, Nekrasov, Okunkov, and Pandey, Pandey, which says, um, in, in this case for Calabial threefolds, that um, Gromov Witten and Ponder to Ponder Thomas and Jennings functions are related by this change of variables Q is minus e to the IU. And this is a somewhat strange change of variables because these are formal Laurent series. An expansion around u equals zero. It's an expansion around q equals zero, but uh, you see u equals zero corresponds to q equals one. So a priori you can't even do this change of variables. So part of the content. So so there's sort of a um, uh, there's a second part which is really actually the first part because you um, you can't state this until you have it, um, which says that I think the gromov witten series is a rational function of Maybe it says Ponder Ponder Thomas series is a, is a rational function of Q, and then you can plug this in. Right. So I think that's um, that's what I wanted to say in the way of introduction to um, enumerative invariance of Calabi-Yau threefolds. Um, they sort of. They correspond to compactifications. You choose a different compactification of the space of curves, and you, you get an, a different enumerative invariant. Nevertheless, um, there's some mysterious relationships between them, ones which, as far as I know, aren't really explained by any geometric relation between the, the compactifications, at least not one um, that's been shown to exist at the mathematical level of of rigor. Okay, so now I want to propose a sort of somewhat different approach to counting curves, one, one which is a bit more formal than, um, than this sort of theory. Um, so before I say what it is, I want to uh, remind you of various flavors of K-theory so, um, so that you see how it's related to that. So take the K-theory of vector bundles. So if uh, you can take right, the free abelian group of vector bundles on on a space X. It could be a topological space or an algebraic variety. Right now, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you quotient by um, quotient by this relation. I guess if it's a variety, you'd want, probably want to um, look at extensions rather than, rather than um, just split extensions. take K theory of projective modules over a, a ring. And now here, I, I, I really, um, I better say, finitely generated projective modules.
Um, but you, 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 you can also do, um, these are sort of maybe the familiar ones you, you've seen, but there's also um, so-called groton decreeing a variety. So you just take free abelian group on varieties over your field k, and, um, <coughs> and you say that x is supposed to equal um, z plus x minus z if z is a closed subvariety of x. Okay, so this is a Grotendieck group of, of varieties. And interesting results about about this ring, <coughs> you can take the um, Groton D group of polyhedra. So you take the free abelian group on, say, polyhedra in, so maybe I shouldn't say polyhedra, but um, because probably by polyhedra you think it's convex. I just mean any sort of um, how to say, subset of, so I'll, okay, I'll, I'll write polyhedron in R3. I mean, subset defined by some linear inequalities and in union and intersection. Modulo inclusion exclusion, A union B plus A intersect B is equal to A. B. Um, and if I, if I did polyhedra in R2, then it's known result that the group you get is just R, the only invariant of a polygon in R2 up to scissors congruence is, is the area. But in R3, there's the Dane invariant, which is um, a, a, a more interesting homomorphism out of this group. OK, so now I can tell you about the the Groton D group of now curves on threefolds. Because you can just take exactly the same definition um, and apply it in this setting. So I guess the, the, the simplest thing you could do is you would take um, well, the direct sum over all um, three folds x of um, h0 with compact support of the space of cycles. On x, so z of x um, is a space of space of one cycles on x. So a point in z of x is just some number of curves, possibly singular, possibly um, intersecting taken with multiplicity. So a point in Z is some formal non-negative integer linear combination of, of cycles, of, of, of one-dimensional subvarieties. Um, sorry, this, this thing? Uh, this is, right, this is just compactly supported integer valued function. So it's H0 with compact support. Yes, yeah, just to, yeah, topological, topological H0 with compact support. <coughs> okay, so <clears throat> right when we do K theory, there's some, just take something freely generated by 
something and mod, mod, mod some relations. Ah, not yeah. Just, why is it not just the free field through what these do? It seems like a lot more structure. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's sort of a, so Z, Z of X is of course a, an, an abelian group, as you note. Um, you can take disjoint, take, you can take, well, a, a, addition of cycles, or union with, with weights. Um, and that's, um, that structure is for, for the moment irrelevant. I'm taking, uh, functions on that. Um, so in, instead, I really want to view Z of X as a topological space. So a nearby point, um, yeah. So uh, if I have some cycle, what's well, a nearby cycle? Well, one thing I could do is I could, you know, if I write it as MI times CI, then I could perturb the curve CI a little bit and take some of MI times CI prime, where CI prime is close to CI. Um, now something a bit more complicated could, could happen too, because I could maybe have two times a curve C, and uh, so a nearby cycle might, um, might consist of uh, two curves, both of which are close by C. Or maybe, maybe it consists of um, a single curve, which is uh, close by C with multiplicity 2. Um, so like, sort of like taking yeah, a ramified cover of C and then, then pushing it off a little bit. That would be a... Ah, oh, so there's even a, I think maybe there's this real color chalk in here. Yeah, so like if I have this uh, with multiplicity three, then maybe a nearby thing could look like this uh, with multiplicity two and, and this with multiplicity one. So in the, the most boring case would be when Z of X is discrete, all the, all the one cycles are isolated. That, that's basically never, well, it's very, all very. The NIs are all positive. Yes, yes, all positive integers. Thank you. Yeah, so, so, so this, a, a very simple case would be um, if the space of cycles is discrete, just all, all the curves are isolated. Um, and then, H zero C of that is just um, just a free abelian group on on curves. This curve with weight one, this curve. Okay, so what what, what do I want to quotient by? So I want enumerative invariants to be um, homomorphisms out of this group. If I have a locally constant function on the space of cycles, I can, and I can take any enumerative theory of curves and just weight it by that, that locally constant function. So this, uh, the curves which lie over given, have a given underlying one cycle, I weight that by, by the value of my function. Uh, so I want, in, yeah, I, I want this gromov witten generating function to be a a homomorphism out of this group. Um, now, any reasonable enumerative theory that, that we, we, we might want to study is, is invariant under deformations. So if I have a one parameter family of complex threefolds, um, then, then the answer I get for, 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 for any fiber of that family should be the same. So I can look at families of threefolds over over the interval, now I'm going to take H zero C of space of space of relative cycles, space of relative cycles X of, of if you have a family of uh, threefolds. Well, it's just the space of you know cycles in one of the fibers, and. There's, there's a map I can take evaluation at zero minus evaluation at one. So uh, any reasonable um, enumerative invariant of, of, 
of curves and threefolds is, gonna, is going to give me a homomorphism out of this group. In particular, um, Cobordism, yeah, 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 quotient by, by bordisms. Are you assuming that all the fibers over each point in the interval are isomorphic? They're all uh, Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Yeah, so um, so it's going to be important for, for doing anything with this definition um, that I'm not requiring properness. And any, um, I, I, I don't insist that these three folds are compact. I don't insist that this is a proper family. So. Um, because it's not proper, the topology of the fibers could vary a lot. Um, so then how do you identify the fiber at 0 and 1? Yeah, no, you, 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 you don't. You don't. There's, there's, um, so this is the sum over all threefolds. And so, so they're just two different threefolds. They go to different terms in this direct sum. Yeah, so you might, you might be worried that, you know, how do you do enumerative geometry when when things are non-compact, uh, you, you should. Yeah, you can you can do whichever you want. Um, um, probably you don't want to do algebraic variety. You want maybe a complex analytics space, a complex manifold. And then you're going to ask me, I guess, what do I mean by a family of those over the, the interval? Yeah, so probably I mean a, you know you you take a family over the complexification of the interval. That's, that's what it would mean to the interval lies inside C, and you take a, a, a germ of family over a neighborhood of this. Just restrict it. Yeah, so you might be worried about non-properness of the family. If I have a non-proper family, how am I going to count? Um, but this is taken care of by taking compact support functions. So even if the, the varieties are non-compact, the space of cycles are non-compact, I, um, I only consider compactly supported functions here. So, so the, the enumeration only takes, takes, always takes place for a compact space of cycles. Okay, so I should, I should have some notation for this group, I think. And I think it would be called H zero of I'd say complex threefolds with coefficients in H zero compact support of cycles. Yeah, so as I as I remarked, any any reasonable enumerative theory of curves gives you homomorphisms out of this group. In particular, we have these. So, so the one thing which led me to try to think about these groups um, was this uh, was the work of this recent work of Ionel and Parker, who proved the Gopa Kumarovafa conjecture, integrality conjecture. For Gromov Witten invariance of, of Kalabiyev threefolds. So I mentioned already Gromov Witten invariants are rational numbers, uh, but certain linear combinations turn out to be integers. And um, well, it was conjectured by Gopal Kumarovafa and, and proven by Ian Allen Parker. And um, their proof, it turns out, basically consists of showing that um, if you take um, 
this definition in the almost complex setting. So like Tony was asking um, about the symplectic setting. Um, in, in, in that setting, Eno and Parker showed that this group um, H0 C of the, the, the calabi yau cycles. This um, is generated as a ring by, by local curves. So what is a local curve? Well, it's basically um, an isolated curve, which is cut out transversely, taken with some, taken with some multiplicity. So that's basically the, 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 the simplest um, sort of cycle you could ask how to enumerate it. If I have a, if I have a smooth curve, uh, genus G, and M times C as a cycle is isolated, that means it um, you know, it doesn't deform as a cycle at all. Um, you could call this a, a local curve. Um, okay, and uh, Brian and Pandey Pandey a long time ago calculated a uh, very difficult calculation. Um, Gromov and Witten invariants of, uh, of local curves. And in particular, they showed this gromov alpha conjecture for, for, for local curves. Um, and so really, the content of Ian and Parker's work was to say that those, those local curves, in a very strong sense, they, sense, they, they generate the, the enumerative theory of all Calabi-Alpha threefold. So if you know some linear constraint on, on, Gro on gromov witten invariance for local curves, and it follows for, for everything. So it would, of course, be very nice to, to use this um, to address more enumerative uh, properties of enumerative invariance. Because this basically says that, I mean, it, it tells you what all, all the enumerative invariants you could possibly write down are. They're just determined by, by, by their value on, on the local curves. So something about um, relating Gromov, Witten, and Ponder, Ponder, Thomas invariants, this MNOP conjecture, um, would also reduce to um, the case of local curves if, um, if this were theorem were, were valid for complex threefolds and not almost complex. So um, th this proof is very uh, differential geometric. You use non-integrable, almost complex structures on almost comp on, on, on symplectic threefolds. And um, that's a somewhat ra ra rather flexible class to work in. Um, and you, you, you really need that flexibility for their proof. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, so there's a complication I'm not, uh, they're, they're, yeah. So this would be the definition of a local curve, except often this just never happens, um, that, that a curve with, with high multiplicity is isolated. It's almost always deform off. And so um, you need a better, um, yeah, so, so one way to define, so right, what, what do you mean by the enumerative theory of a local curve if, if this isn't an isolated point? One thing you can do is, is use equivariant localization. So if you have a, um, a vector bundle of rank 2 over a curve and you want to count some sort of cycles supported on the zero section, what you do is you look at, um, um, you look at the space of cycles together with a C star action on, 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 on the vector bundle, just scaling the fibers. And the only fixed point is the zero section on that. 
zero section with, with multiplicity. So um, the equivariant virtual fundamental class um, by equivariant localization localizes to some, some fundamental class and just a fixed locus. And, and that's how you can make, make sense of this. Now I've forgotten what you asked, or <laughs> so I don't know what their answer to that. So I'd, I'd, li I'd like to describe how to adapt this result to the, to the setting of complex manifolds. Because um, your gromov witten invariants make perfect sense in the almost complex setting, but because they're based on maps. Um, and um, you know, ma maps, uh, from pseudo-holomorphic maps from a, a one-dimensional holomorphic Riemann surface to an almost complex target is an elliptic problem, is a reasonable module-like theory. You can define enumerative invariants. But um, th there's no uh, known um, reasonable theory of ideal sheaves on almost complex manifolds. So you, you, no, no, no way to define Pandey Pandey Thomas invariants on the almost complex setting that we know. So, um, so you, can't, you can't talk about this um, invariant there, as far as we know. So, Okay, so we need a bigger complex. That would be um, uh, this complex. So, so as soon as you see an expression like this, you might say, well, why not uh, look at higher dimensional families of, of three folds? Maybe that's uh, the, the better thing to do. And that's indeed what you need to do. So this is a relative threefold. And you just take the same thing complex to support code chains on the relative cycle space. And the, homo the cohomology of this complex I'm going to call um, cohomology with compact support of cycles on complex defaults. Um, yeah, so um, holomorphic structures, integrable almost complex structures, um, are, are quite rigid. And you don't have the, the flexibility to um, deform them locally and have rich enough def deformations um, uh, to to, to port the, the proof of this to the complex setting. But to compensate, it's enough to consider families of, of these. So, um, um, yeah, so, so, so this is some big double complex, right? There's, um, I guess it would, it would look like that. And, and this group here is, is the co-kernel of this map, right here. So this group is you know, one entry in an, of the E2 term of a spectral sequence converging to the homology of this. So this is some um, more horrendous invariant. Okay, ne nevertheless, um, yeah, let's take H, uh, H, H0. Yeah, let's, let's just, uh, so, so we take Calabi-Yau cycles, again, just the, just the ones which, um, all of whose components pair to zero with, um, <coughs> with, with the first turn class. So this is generated if 
by local curves. Uh, so that's indexed by um, genus and So uh, transversality, also known as unobstructedness for moduli spaces of, of curves, moduli spaces of maps, is something which um, symplectic geometrists have spent a lot of time uh, thinking about. How, how, how do you ensure that? Uh, what, under, under what circumstances is it true? And what, what circumstances is it not true? And it's an important player in this proof of you know, the result of Ian Allen Parker. And um, it, it's an important part of the, the proof of this, too. In, in particular, I, I don't see any plausible way of, of generalizing this uh, beyond the Calabial case or belong beyond, beyond, the, um, beyond the case where the, the anti canonical bundle is positive. <coughs> Yeah, so may, may, maybe I'll, t I'll talk a little bit about the um, how, how you prove this. Um, so if I have a complex manifold, we need to work all ev everywhere here in the, uh, in the setting of complex manifolds and um, complex analytic spaces. Um, I don't know whether you can do everything algebraically. Now, if we have a, a divisor, smooth divisor, and oh, actually, it probably doesn't need to be smooth. Let's put that in parentheses. Suppose we have a, a vector field, which is defined in a neighborhood of D, and it's possibly singular along D. So, it, um, so here's x. Here's D, and then there's some, some vector field here, just, just to find a neighborhood. And I allow some poles along D. That's OK. So what you can do is you can use the vector field um, to re-glue a neighborhood of D um, to the rest of x. So you can view x as x minus D union a neighborhood of of D, that's two complex manifolds glued, glued along this open set. And then you can decide to re-glue um, after flowing by the vector field. Re-glue re after flowing along V. So since V is a holomorphic vector field, the flow, the, the flow is also uh, by holomorphism, at least for small times, and away from this singular locus and the boundary. And so, so you get a family that we call it x uh, tilde, x, x bar sub v over maybe, say, a small disk inside C. And if you use this class of deformations of the, of the complex structure on x, then you can basically make any map you like unobstructed. So if I have u from c to x, any map, say it's non-constant. And we have our divisor such that um, it, 
state intersects the image of C, then there exists some finite dimensional subspace of these the space of vector fields. Such that uh, this resulting family where I take this Or regluing your, your divisor um, the map U is unobstructed. And and the corollary is that when you're thinking about this this huge uh, complex, it suffices to consider just those cycles which are unobstructed. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit hard to say what you mean by a cycle being unobstructed. So, a cycle has lots of. You can deform a cycle in, in many different ways. So, you know, for instance, um, y squared equals x cubed can deform to y squared equals x minus t, x plus t times x. Um, and this does not come from you know, deformation of maps in, in, in the sense of stable maps, because this is genus 0, and this is genus 1. So when I say unobstructed, um, I mean the sort of just this unobstructed in a sort of weak sense, um, in the sense that you, you take your, your, your curve CI, um, you look at the normalizations and the maps to, to X, and those maps should be unobstructed. Um, what is the notation in the where it defines a section of the paper? Oh, yeah, so I mean, Right, so if I said minus n d, I would allow a pole along d with order n. So minus infinity d means I allow a pole on d with, of, of arbitrary order. So I guess I should say why, why this implies the the theorem. Um, <coughs> well, unobstructed means you are of the of the expected dimension. So, space of relative cycles <coughs> mapping to delta p. Um, the space of cycles in something Calabi Yau has uh, relative dimension ha has um, has expected dimension zero. So this in in the unobstructed. case has dimension p, it also has dimension p, and um, is generated in degrees less than or equal to 0. That means along this, uh, this half space homology here. 
Um, that means I'm taking on, so I have a delta p here. Sign out here in the p. Uh, p column. Then I have a cohomology class of, um, of degree. Yeah, so I think, I, think I, I think I meant the opposite. I think I meant everything up here. I have a cohomology class in degree at least p. And if we're in dimension p, and I have cohomology in degree at least p, then that has to be 0, except in, in, in ex dimension exactly p, in which case it's just a point gray dual of a point. And that is a local curve, essentially, by, by definition. Um, so, so, so the general unobstructed case, uh, when you have non calabi yau here, as far as I know, it's just a, a big mess. So this, there are still more cases of this MNLP to, uh, to, to be proven. I'll stop here. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, you can <clears throat> you can get a, a universal invariant for R cycles for any any R you like. Um, you know, people have a hard. I think it'd be, there's much less developed theory of sort of counting surfaces in higher dimensional sub, sub varieties, but um, may, maybe this helps do something there. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but uh, there certainly could be. Let's see. Yeah. So so here, um, these relative threefolds, relative Calabiaus, can um, uh, can be non-compact certainly. Yeah. Um, and you, 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 you need the flexibility of, <coughs> of the, so compact Calabi might not have enough deformations. 